Rock me mama like a wagon wheel Rock me mama any way you feel Hey, hey mama rock me It's Beffers with Bob and Poncho Man. Welcome, everybody, back to Breakfast with Bob St. George Edition. My name is Bob Abbott. We're brought to you by Master Spas, Zion's Bank, Quintana Roo, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Clash Endurance, Premium Plus Sports, and, of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation, our next guest, Laura Siddle, 2021. She finished uh, second in Lanzarote by 58 <laughs> seconds. That's such a brutal race. And then second in Challenge Roth by yeah, a few seconds more than that. <laughs> How you doing, Laura? I'm good. How are you, Bob? I feel like, I feel I should rename it. it. Should be brunch with Bob. Exactly. Today. It is. It's, yeah, it's 12:30 <laughs> or lunchtime. Yeah. Yes. And you're good. Yeah, you're, I'm good. Really good. How are you? I'm spectacular. And you've had some injury plagued last couple of years. Yeah, yeah. It's been an interesting few years, as it has for everyone, with uh, you know navigating the pandemic. So it's uh, I think it's really great that we are all back here back racing again. and. Um, it's just been exciting seeing the athletes arrive in town, you know, people that you haven't seen for a few years and, and yes. things and Poncho Man and, and stuff like that, which is great. And yeah, look, I've been I've been really lucky through most of my career to be touch wood injury free. And then unfortunately, just the last couple of years have just struggled with a, a collarbone um, break and stress fracture subsequently. And then, yeah, had a few issues over Christmas again with the with the shoulder and I lost strength in my right arm for some reason was getting a lot of nerve pain and a hip issue but touch wood fingers crossed we're here on the up yeah fit healthy ready to race and you've did a training camp here not long ago so what, yeah. what are your thoughts on this course <laughs> it's brutal it's brilliant um yeah we came here a couple of weeks ago with uh, my coach julie dibbons and our squad um which was really great so just to be out on the course training uh, right. on the bike and the, on the run course and just to get some eyes on it and get some time on it sort of before the before this week really and before the chaos hits off um i mean yeah it's it's a tough course but that's also really exciting for the world championships and again the first one outside of kona and to have a really honest brutal course and huge opportunity for a lot of athletes to, yeah. to do something different and you know, there's a lot of statistics that go around the Kona race and, and having the World Championships at Hawaii, and I think they might be ripped up this, this weekend. Well, what's nice is there's really, we have no track record here, no. right? Yeah. Uh, no, we've had 70.3. We haven't had really the full since 2012, like 10 years. Uh, and f I look at people who've done well, Ironman Wales, Ironman Lanzarote, who understand that it's a long day and you have to be patient and people will blow up and you know if you're, you're giving all the secrets away now uh, Bob. you need to tell everyone to go out hard on the first go bit of the bike and, <laughs> yeah that last part yeah. there's no canyon it's fine. no big deal no big deal it's, it's pretty much. flat it's downhill yeah. you'll be yeah, good yeah. <laughs> but this is a thinking person's course don't you think yeah definitely i think it's you know it's that patient game patience game i think and and a strength-based course but you know as with any race and with the world championships you've got to get that balance between playing your own game and being patient, but obviously adapting and being flexible to the race dynamics. And I think, you know, on the women's side, we've got, like, it's just so, so open and there's a huge depth. Really and I think is. we're going to see a different style of racing that perhaps is more, you know, I think there'll be more people to athletes together on the women's side. And so you've got to be able to adapt to those dynamics, which in a lot of races, the females aren't used to. They're used to just being on their own for, for lengths of the bike course or, or, right. or whatever. So, yeah. So going from uh, being a, uh, having a degree in mechanical engineering <laughs> and deciding, oh, I think I'll go be a pro <laughs> triathlete. That had to be an interesting decision. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, grew up always doing sports and loved it and athletics and, and netball in the UK. And, um, but sport, when I grew up, because I am one of the older ones, um, was very much the hobby. And, you know, you, you went through school, you, university degree, and you got that corporate job right. and the sport looked great on your CV and making you look like you'd got additional skills and very rounded, but it was never really, uh, for me growing up, like something I saw as a, 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 as a career professional. professional. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I, I got, I moved to Australia with my job at the time, working as an engineer with Shell and, you know, Australians love triathlon. So got sort of introduced to the sport through colleagues from work there and started as a complete beginner as an amateur and yeah four or five years as an amateur working my way way at the ranks just yeah I, I guess just got hooked and loved it and then got to a, a crossroads I guess where um I was doing relatively well as an amateur and 
wasn't particularly enjoying my corporate job, even though I had, I was really lucky. I had a great boss who supported me in, in the sport as well. Um, but just got to that point of going, it's sort of a now or never decision. And I didn't want to look back in 10, 20 years time and, and think what if that I hadn't kind of given it a go to go professional. Whereas I think growing up and doing the other sports, I'd, I'd got to quite a high level, but never, yeah, never fully committed. And so it was like, you know, with triathlon and this, you know, new sport at that point that you're into, it's, you know, don't, don't miss that opportunity now because you won't get it again. And Ironman Australia, that, uh, mm. how many times you won that? Three, and I was defending for about five years until they had it last weekend. Oh, <laughs> I was right, that's right. You were I, because obviously, at Sarah Crowley, I what know, is she thinking? Um, yeah, 2017, 18 and 19, I won there. And then obviously in 2021, it didn't happen. And actually in 2022, it wasn't a pro race. So it, I would have, again, sort of carried on through till next year. But um, I think with Ironman New Zealand getting cancelled early this year, they moved the pro race to, which was a shame it wasn't a pro race because it's a fantastic race. Right. But they then moved the pro race to Ironman Australia. Oh, and so it became a pro race. And yes, Sarah Crowley and Beck Clark had a great battle. And yeah, Sarah was that took hard the win. Was to go? Um, it, it, when I, when I realized they'd put the pros back in, it was hard, but obviously it was a week before this race and I, I've had yeah. this focus and commitment. So, and, and also to be honest, I've had three amazing years at Ironman Australia. You know, it was my first win over the iron distance, um, which was incredibly special being in Australia. Defending that in 2018 was amazing. And then, but then I, I don't think the lead up I had into 2019 and I, you know, it, things weren't in a great place and I was low on confidence and I had this big battle with Caroline Zena, Caroline Zena, Caroline Stefan, yeah. Zena Warrior Princess and we were, end up, we ran together side by side and, you know, I, I was lucky enough on the day to take that win and, and the third, the third win and the emotion and the feeling of that win, I don't think I'll ever, ever replace, like replicate that again. So yeah. I'm not saying I'm not going to go back to Ironman Australia, but those three years were really special and I feel I've kind of, I went out on a high at that point. Yeah, I mean, how can you do better than that? Exactly. Yeah, when you yeah. go side by side with yeah. someone. That sort of reminds me of like Chrissy Wellington yeah. after 2011 going, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. Was, that was the best I could ever do. Yeah. I don't want it. I don't want yeah. to do that again. Well, your first time you went Ironman Australia, there was a young woman named Lauren Parker who was also a pro who was going to be doing her first pro Ironman. Yeah. And probably another reason that Ironman Australia is important to you is because of the bond you guys created yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> crying. but the bond that you guys created that 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 time because lauren got injured on april 17th leading into the race you end up winning the race and you go visit her in the hospital and she's paralyzed from the waist down and you immediately when we said we're bringing her to san diego for San Diego triathlon challenge you didn't think twice you came yeah <laughs> <laughs> Shall I take over? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you became, you know, very important to her and to where she is now, Paralympic silver medalist, world champion, and all of that. How important has that been to you? Oh, I mean, I mean, the results and the change that Lauren has had over the last couple of years, I mean, that that's her. That's her, I'm going to say, stubbornness, and she's over there, so she's listening. Um, stubbornness, determination dedication as an athlete that she had prior to the accident right. um we, i didn't know lauren before before ironman australia in 2017 i knew her name you know obviously looking at the start list going into that race i knew she was this up-and-coming athlete she was a new, new professional it was her ironman debut as a professional even though she'd had great results right. as an age grouper in kona um but, you know, the Australian triathlon community is pretty small. And when something like that happens 10 days out from a race, it just reverberated around the world and I, or around the community. And uh, yeah, like it just affected me, even though I didn't know, know her, know but her. It, yeah. she, it's the community. And so, yeah, I mean, again, she should have been lining up with us, but, you know, I was lucky that I went on and that was my first win and it was special. And I just felt this need to, to go and visit her in in Sydney on the the way home after the race and which is interesting when you haven't met anyone before and then you're going to turn up and they've just had this life-changing incident which is still so fresh and try and you know <laughs> all those stupid things you were saying and we still joke about it now is like how can I say my legs hurt after a race yeah, of just right, doing right, that right, and, yeah. and her life change I mean if we joke now Lauren's come to watch some of my races which has been great and I always make a joke about how our feet are going to get like 
here in St. George, her feet are going to get cold in the lake and yeah. she needs to be careful. And of course she can't feel anything. So, um, but she kindly reminds me and takes the piss out of me for that as well. <laughs> but yeah. And then, you know, I yeah reached out to CAF and said, Hey, look, have you heard of what's happened? And do you work further than America? And you were fantastic and got straight on the phone to Lauren and brought her out to San Diego. And I was definitely going to be there. And we've sort of used that as a great place to meet up most years yeah, yes. which has been great and then i was lucky enough to be in tokyo at the paralympics with british triathlon um as a reserve guide for their visually impaired but if i say secretly that role was so that i could be out there to um to support and watch lauren and yes it was different circumstances with covid this year or last year um so i couldn't actually be on race course and right. we were kind of stuck in the hotel but just yeah being pretty close and being able to watch it and just seeing the the progression she's made so rapidly in a new sport and how just yeah how she's changed and grown and i'm not sure whether it's an acceptance or not but just adapted and changed into this new athlete that she is has just been incredible and so what's the rest of your season look like after now you're finally back sort of healthy racing yeah. again yeah touch wood yeah so um i've been in the states since the end of February so I'll head back to Girona after after this race on Wednesday um and then challenge Rote again uh, um in the summer got some always. unfinished like, business I have there. some unfinished business yeah yeah second there last time yeah so I've time. had two second places there yeah. um both to the then current world champions of Daniela Reef one year and Annie Howe last year um and again I'm not sure my my record goes fourth second fourth second so this year's not great for <laughs> great for results i might have to change the uh, change the, the the routine but um yeah so challenge roth and then kind of not sure for the end of the year just seeing what how what it happens on saturday and i've got a few tentative plans but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay at the moment i can't think life doesn't exist past the 7th of may uh, no, does it? <laughs> it, doesn't. it does not and what are what are your hopes for for saturday oh gosh um just being able to put out the training that I've done and the yes. work I've done and having my best day and my best performance. And I know that's cliche as it sounds, but um, yeah, just focusing and having the confidence on, on what I'm capable of. And if that's that puts that me matters. somewhere in the mix, then happy days. Love it, Laura. Thank you so much for taking time. Pancho Man, take us out. Rock me, mama, like a wagon wheel. Rock me, mama, any way you feel. Ooh, mama, rock me. And breakfast with Bob. Chee-hoo. Pancho, man. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. See ya.